everybody. I'm Mark Becky, Research Director for AI with the Futurum Group. Welcome to the AI Moment, our weekly podcast that explores the latest developments in enterprise AI. You know, we're literally in a moment. Um, the pace of change and innovation for AI is unprecedented. The world's never seen anything like what we've seen since the introduction of ChatGPT kind of changed the world in late 2022 and kickstarted the generative AI era. Now, with this show, the AI, the AI moment, uh, we try to distill the mountain of information, uh, separate the real from the, the hype, uh, and provide you with sure-handed analysis uh, from the latest advancements in AI technology and all that's going on with the mutating uh, vendor landscape to AI regulations, uh, ethics, risk management, and a lot more. So. Today, most of our episodes are somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes. Today, I am uh, happy to do, we have a topic I, I'm kind of excited about, uh, big news last week. We're going to talk about Google Gemini Advanced, um, which uh, I'm kind of saying is Google's counter to Copilot. Okay, so with that, let's dive in. So last week on the 8th, um, Google published a series of blog posts uh, that was outlining kind of a, a, a little bit of a, a shift in the, 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 um, the branding of the word they're using for Ge Gemini, right? So there was a few things they outlined, um, and it really the bigger news was about how uh, Google Gemini Ultra, which is the biggest of their LLMs they talked about a few months ago, are now becoming part of Google products. So Here's the details of what they kind of talked about that day. So uh, Gemini Ultra is the largest Google model ever, uh, and it's designed for the most complex tasks uh, possible for an LLM. And, you know, the, some of the details they gave us back, I'm going to go through that a little bit, what they gave us back before when they first talked about the Gemini Ultra uh, LLM was that it outperformed GPT-4 um in a bunch of tests and it included uh these tests for reasoning uh, math and coding and the ability to do multimodal um thinking right so there's that and it was they, they went on to talk about how it was designed uh to be natively multimodal and what that does for reasoning is it can help make sense of these complex written and visual information pieces that come in, right? So, uh, and I'll quote them. They say, it makes Gemini uniquely skilled at uncovering knowledge that can be difficult to discern amid vast amounts of data. So it's that, that um, language model LLM is looking not only at uh, written text, but um, videos and other pieces that might have information in them to pull pull these things together. So that, that's what that does. Um, the other part of this announcement was that BARD has been rebranded as Gemini. And when you look at the packaging of this, and this is where it gets more interesting to me, is Ultra is going to be part of what they call, right now they're calling Gemini Advanced, uh, which is available through um, a uh, it's a subscription service called, it's called the new Google One AI Premium Plan. It's $19.99 a month. Uh, they will start you with a two-month trial at no cost. So Google One AI Premium adds some benefits to their existing Google One Premium stuff, such as like uh, you get two ter terabytes of storage, but with AI Premium, subscribers will quotes to them soon be able to use Gemini in Gmail docs, slides, sheets, and more. And they went on to describe what advanced can do. It has quote, broad ranging capabilities in advanced coding, logical reasoning, following nuanced instructions and collaborating on creative projects. So there, there were a couple different blog posts that went out about this. One was from, uh, Sanchar Pichai, who's the CEO of Google, and another was from um, a, a, an executive that was more specific around what Gemini Advanced can do. So here's why this is important. You, know, you kind of parse through this a little bit. And what I was thinking was, you know, 
we had first we had Microsoft's Copilot, and now we have Google Gemini Advanced. And let's put that into context for a second here. In just a span of a few months, we are now going to have these sophisticated generative AI assistants made available to mass market, right? So, uh, and there's more to come. You know, we know there will be. But in the big picture, what does this mean, right? And, and so you have, uh, you know, two of the biggest companies in the world putting these out there for general purpose uses. And if you think about Copilot, it's it's sitting in these um, these apps that are used by everybody every day um, in, the, in the Office 365 suite. And we all, you know, so many people use um, Office Mail and, and Teams and all that. And then on the other side, you have Google now with saying that advanced would be available for price uh, within their suite of um, competing products, right? All right. So what we need to do here first is understand drivers. And I think that's important to, to think about these two companies have a little bit different drivers than each other. They do compete with each other, but in, in other ways, they don't uh, so much. The, their drivers are different. So Let's go back over that for a second. So in 2022, Google Alphabet revenues were $279 billion. And of that, uh, $224 billion came from various forms of advertising, most of it in search advertising. So, you know, where I'm going with this is we never should forget that the main revenue driver for Google Alphabet and all its various companies is search advertising, search advertising. So, um, you know, put that in perspective, you have uh, divisions, right? So one of the divisions that's important in this space is Google Cloud. So in 2022, that 279 billion in revenue, 26.2 billion were made by uh, Google Cloud of, of that 279. And um, interestingly, in the first quarter of 2023, Google Cloud reported its first profit in more than a decade. So none of these numbers are small change, but given the scale and the ratio of the economics there, it would make sense that Google isn't always, it wouldn't make sense to me that Google's always thinking about search, like we said. So here's Bard, now Gemini gets this boost through the use of these Gemini LLMs. Um, but you got to parse this out a little bit. So um, Ultra, which is that really big model that Google just is, is debuting into general uh, general availability, is not always going to be in BARD. It says that in, in the announcements they gave. So uh, sometimes it is. It's more when you're paying the premium, uh, then you're getting the Ultra. Um, capabilities. And, and, and so when we also parse this out and say Gemini Advanced, right, is not about search, um, but it's about a generative AI assistant that like, it's like Copilot. It traverses and assists users across multiple apps. And this to me is a move that what appears to be table stakes, I think, um, of a strategy to protect Google's apps, you know, Gmail, Docs, uh, sheets and, and so on against Microsoft Copilot's in Office 365, right? So it's, it feels like it's kind of a table stake strategy to do that when you when you put this LLM out there uh, to to um, be the engine for this um, as assistant, a paid assistant, which is interesting. So, but I think it um, if you pull it back a little bit further. Um, the idea that we're going to see these agents, a, a, a very sophisticated agent now with this LLM behind it in, um, in Google's world, uh, there's, an ad, there's an advantage for them, and that's in mobile, right? So we, don't, we won't want to forget about mobile. Uh, this is where, uh, you know, they announced during this whole piece that Gemini advanced, that, that sophisticated agent, Will now be in Android and iOS. Now that that's a that's probably a, a bigger piece of news uh, and a strategy where Google has to protect uh, some space and may make some inroads because 
uh, there's not really an equivalent um, piece. In, uh, there's no iOS, there's no OS for mobile that, um, that Microsoft controls. So at the end of this, I think that ultimately, really, it, it's all of those things uh, aside. Um, Google's resources and their focus uh, will be, I think, at the end of the day, to continue to look and master generative AI uh, for next generation search. And we've talked about this about in my practice, uh, I've written extensively about this idea that uh, these are, are not announcements about this next generation of what search will look like. And let's talk about that for a second. Um, what's the kind of the key piece to that right now is what they call search generative experience, SGE. And they have been experimenting uh, uh, along the same lines as what Copilot uh, was doing and what was happening within Bing uh, there. But there's nothing we're not we're not done yet and and i think if you if what 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 you have to consider there is how people use search in the future the idea would be do we search uh more intelligently instead of just getting links back do we we're, we're seeing these summaries of ideas uh and that type of thing and what the problem with that is is how do you monetize that so you, you're talking about massive monetization that google is trying to protect and preserve is how do we marry up better search with being paid, you know, being paid through that search advertising. So th th we're staying tuned on that. I think that these models that we just saw that just came out uh, that are now the rollout of Gemini are going to, um, you know, that's gonna be where we're really gonna see and continue to see Google's primary focus these are just early pieces, I think, that, that are really the prelude to what they do with search. So I, I'm gonna, this is funny, I wrote this note back when um, the Gemini family of models uh, were announced. So I'm gonna read what I put in my conclusions, see, you know, just for fun. I put, there are a significant amount of reasons Google will invest heavily in generative AI innovation, and there's no reason to believe the primary driver of that innovation, particularly in an AI model development, will be to make proprietary Google products better. Okay, well, I still think that's the case. The primary goal, for, in, uh, in my opinion, for the Gemini models is to transform search. Uh, but Google has this very diverse business and clearly the models, Gemini models are becoming foundational, so many pieces of the business, their applications, Android, Chrome, Google Cloud offerings. So the use of Gemini branding seems a little confusing to me, uh, but I, I have a feeling they're gonna modify that going forward and we're gonna see a little bit of a different kind of take from that. So, so anyway, that's what's going on this week with Google and their big launch. And we're gonna stay tuned and see what happens because in the scheme of things, this really has a big impact on so many people and it's that just really uh, accelerates what, what I think is the mass market adoption of, of generative AI. It's gonna be through these applications um, and things like Google, uh, Gemini Advanced is gonna be something that uh, sits up and, and competes with Microsoft for Copilot. All right, so that's it this week, short and sweet get you on to your day and do other things. Um, thanks for joining me uh, here at the AI Moment. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review our webcast podcasts on your preferred platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.